Hey YouTube, and today I have a very exciting review for you guys on the new racket by Yonex, the Jura 10. Let's get right into it! It comes in a very premium and leather-like case. The inside of this case is very thickly padded, so you don't have to worry about your racket bumping into other things while your racket is still in the case. First, I'm going to talk about what Yonex advertises this racket about. So, it is claimed by Yonex that this racket has some sort of dynamic dual design, which means one side is box framed, and one side is aerodynamic framed, and the aerodynamic side is for the backhand, box head is for the forehand. They say this is meant to give you a more like powerful forehand, but yet retaining the factor of having a very quick and agile defensive backhand. First, when you look at this racket, you can't really tell which side is the aerodynamic side and which side is the box head side. Well, if you just like put your finger like this and just squeeze, you can feel that this side is sharper than this side. And an easier thing to remember is if you're right-handed, you want the orange side up. And if you're left-handed, you want the green side up. And that's how you hold the racket. It claims that this racket has a stiff flex for its shaft, which allows for better control, but still retaining that factor of power. On one side of the shaft, it says, made in Japan, even balance and long size. The Jura 10 advertises itself as having a very long size, but... I don't get it, because the Voltrix Z Force 2 doesn't say long size, and yet, if you put the tops together, like that, right, like even level, and then you look at the bottom, the Jura 10 is noticeably shorter than the Voltrix Z Force 2. Yeah, the racket has like a very good even balance, which allows you to have power, but speed at the same time, and I don't understand why they say long size, because when I hold this, it feels just average to short compared to like the Voltrix Z Force 2 for some reason. On the other side of the shaft it says high modulus graphite nanometric super slim shaft. Um, the shaft is not that slim to be honest compared to like the Voltrix Z Force 2 and the rest of the other rackets from the high end Yonix ranges. The frame is said to be made out from H.M graphite nanometric DR Naitai fiber and the shaft is said to be made out of HM graphite again and nanometric. Here I have the 3U G5 edition of the racket and it has SP on it. Okay, so let's get on to my opinion now. So, first impressions of this racket when I first started playing with this is that it felt really light in the hand when I swung it around, had a good momentum. I thought this would be a good racket until the actual playing time. I used to use the Voltrix Z Force 2, which I'll be reviewing soon as well. And I would expect this to be a much quicker racket because it's even balanced compared to the head heavy balance that I used to use. So I was expecting to get faster shots, faster reaction times. Well, it let me down, seriously. I couldn't clear shots to the back when I can easily clear them with my Voltrix Z Force 2. I couldn't get any power or control from this racket and it simply felt Weak. Bear in mind, I was using BG66 Ultimax, which is like a very repulsive string in the Yonix series. So, I got this racket restrung to Zymax 66 Fire, and now it performs a lot better. Well, I think this racket is overpriced for what it gives you, and it's not worth it. Basically, you like this feels like an average racket. Whereas the Voltrix Z Force 2, I can actually feel a clear difference from like that racket to other rackets. So, this racket has let me down on first impression. So after some time of using this racket, now I got used to this racket, isn't it? So, now I'm going to give you my opinion on what it feels like and how it performs. I've been gradually getting used to the balance, the weird balance of this racket. The overall weight... The Jura is heavier than the Voltrix Z Force 2, but you might think this is lighter because it's even balance, whereas this is head heavy. I'm starting to like the fact that it is lighter than my Voltrix Z Force 2 and that I can easily maneuver this. I would say that this racket is very good for doubles, but not exactly for singles because singles you need very controlled shots, whereas in doubles you just need a fast paced racket. Well, of course you need control, but fast paced and reaction is like more vital for the game. 
I could get very powerful smashes with this, very quick smashes, but I'm starting to feel that I'm lacking control with this racket, and I couldn't get the same sort of like touch as I would get from the Voltrix Z Force 2. Defensive shots are very good, net shots are quite good. Net shots feel really controlled with this racket. I can get very tight and controlled net shots without even having to put much effort into trying. For me, clears are fine now because I got used to the racket, but I'm still lacking the touch that I would get from the Z Force 2, and I can't really predict where the shuttle would go, like, oh, whether it would be in or out when I, as soon as I hit it. So, that's a downside. Drop shots, well, you can easily play them, but I find it a bit difficult to play a very tight and fast drop shot. I don't even know why. The touch seems to not be there with this racket as much. So, yeah. Whereas the Z Force 2, it's heavy and powerful, but yet you can still control the drop shots and the net shots very easily. Okay, so now I'm gonna show a test play of this racket that I've done with my friend. If you've enjoyed this video or found it informative, please like, subscribe, and tell your friends about my channel. Bye bye!